Hey guys, it's time for another edition of the Retro Buzz, episode number seven. This is our uh, CES wrap up type show, and we've got Palomino, Glenn Plamento <laughs> joining us. I have to say that every time. Come on, you know that. Hey, it's cool. It's cool. It's a long <laughs> name. I've, I've heard it all. So uh, we've got Glenn with us, and obviously we're short. Another regular that we have on here, but we do have Matt Damon with us, and he is no, it's not cool toy, but we got the next best thing. We got the P Dub. P Dubs. And hey, thanks guys. I, I literally just got home from Vegas about <laughs> what that. twenty twenty five <laughs> minutes ago. I've been dealing with all kinds of stuff. It's been a it's been a crazy day, but happy to be on the show and. uh you know, happy to happy to help out while uh, Doug is uh, on a plane playing with his uh, video games on the plane. Well, you know, we figured, uh, am I right, Glenn? It was we, we had to have somebody on here that could talk about CES since we weren't there. And we were kind of counting on Doug for that. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And also, I want to take one second to uh, thank uh, Doug's wife. Thank you very much for letting him go and helping him out at the show she was a huge help and a trooper so thank you very much and uh absolutely i mean p-dub was right down there in the trenches you know he was working hard i loved a lot of the videos he was showing out there and uh until cool toy comes back we have the next best thing here mr p-dub and oh thanks man and i think we found out while you're at ces that your nickname was actually because you call it p-dubs it's pinball dubs Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you, uh, you know, uh, you know, I volunteered to help, uh, the toy shock, uh, company, you know, with social media stuff, uh, cause they're a very small company, brand new and, uh, and things of that nature. So they, you know, it's great to have someone in the booth doing videos and pictures and sending out tweets and Instagram, uh, just lending them a hand. And, uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was the first time I've ever been to CES and, uh, I'll definitely never forget it. That's for sure. There was there was a lot of coverage going on, and um, oh, yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna cut to something right now that um, Doug, even though he's not here, he actually put together a little CES clip that he wanted to share with everybody, and so we're gonna take you to that right now, kind of give you a little overview of all the products. <clears throat> I'm sure you've seen the coverage. A lot of guys were out there doing it live, and did a great job doing it live, bringing you guys the action, the pictures. Uh, Doug was one of them, and so take you that now
Well, once again, we want to thank Doug for that. That was a great um, introduction, I guess you would say, to, um, you know, for CES, for everything that they that they brought to the table. Um, we, we added a fourth panelist during that. We have uh, Matt Scott, he all the way from Germany, and he's going to help us talk about the the next part of this. And um, let's talk a little bit about this, though, guys, with the Arcade 1-Up before we get into the at games. Um, Arcade 1-Up brought, they brought the heat. Let's just be honest. They, they, they came, they delivered, they promised, they said, hey, we're gonna, we're going to deliver. And honestly, I think I think they did. Glenn, what's your takeaway? Because everybody's seen everything that Arcade One Up brought to the table. We just saw it in the video, and and people watching all week long. What's your biggest takeaway from the Arcade One Up? Well, I'm going to be honest. I mean, again, it's hard to imagine. They've only really been doing this for a year. For some reason, Arcade One Up feels like it's been with us a lot longer than they have. Um, but the, there's a couple of things I took away from it. One was product-wise, and one was personnel-wise. Product-wise, the machines they're coming out with, I am excited about, but I'm really more, honestly, excited about the Coleco purchase of the Luminicades, the old ColecoVision uh, size machines. I'm really excited for that. And more so for those micro consoles, the Atari, the ColecoVision, and television with the little old TV set. That stuff, I, I assume, took a lot of people by surprise, and they're very neat. Now, of course, things like NBA Jam, which is, you know, we've kind of known for a while that was probably going to be coming out. But the fact that they make that Wi-Fi enabled to allow you to play other people across the country or the world and leaderboards and stuff like that, it's kind of showing that Arcade One Up is definitely not sitting on the laurels. They are listening to all of us and they're adding features. <coughs> and even with the machines that bring it back. Now, uh, people ask me all the time about, you know, uh, about my spinner. And I have told Arcade One Up, and I've told the community this many times. I have no problem with Arcade One Up, you know, their spinner coming out with a new one. I'm actually glad they did. Uh, and their new, uh, looks like a six in one or maybe the 12 one coming out is going to have their new free spinning spinner. And that's all that matters that they're taking their product and they're improving it. And I take my hat off for them for, for listening to us and doing such a thing. And the one thing I want to mention about personnel is both David, John, Scott, always say the same thing. Listen, it's because of the fans, people in the community, that these things have been happening. They admitted that when the machine came out, you know, it was kind of testing the waters. And I've said that before to all these companies, even with like Toy Shock. When they first come out, they're just testing the waters, seeing how it is. And Arcade One Up definitely saw, wait a second, you know, we, we, we have something here. This is really just supposed to be a little pet project for Scott at the time. And he realized that, no, there is a huge market here. He came out with machines and listened to all of us. And I agree with something he said in the video. How many of these companies move this fast? Some people say they're not moving fast. But when you look at Microsoft or Sony or Nintendo or other companies, RK1 up at Scott have been listening to us. He's in the trenches all the time. And they are making changes. Any kind of change takes time to happen. But I, I'm telling you from the heart that I've not seen a company go so far so fast with their product line so that's probably the biggest thing i took away from all of ces was that yeah what what do you what do you think uh we're going to jump to uh p dubs here what do, you, what do you think the biggest takeaway for you was with arcade one up at ces was it the pinball was it uh burger time special limited edition cab what 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 tickled your fancy well actually it, and and i don't know if anyone else it's kind of funny so I think Steve and I talked to you on the phone and I think I talked to Ralph and I, another guy on the phone on my nice, you know, five hour drive home from Vegas. <laughs> and I, I think I had the same conversation with all three content creators. I'm like, what were you most excited about? And I told all of you guys the same thing. And it's going to sound so cheesy, but I'll, it's, it's cause it's sentimental. It's that, uh, is those little Coleco, um, recreations that they're coming out with, uh, because my parents had those when we were a kid. And I, we had the Pac-Man and Ouch. We had the, Parents? Uh, Ouch. yeah, yeah, yeah. We had the Pac-Man, we had the Donkey Kong and I never thought I would see those again. I've seen them on eBay for a couple hundred bucks, but I've never wanted to buy them. But to be able to get those from arcade one up, I think that's what this business or this industry is all about is all of us recapturing those things that were important to us when we were younger. And that definitely uh, captured a piece of uh, a piece of my heart 
when I walked through their booth and I saw those. So, I, and of course, they, they got some pretty cool arcade cabinets coming out too. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, we got a super chat here on um, YouTube and it says, Glenn, did, did um, any of you, are you making spinners with Arcade 1-Up on the new Asteroids cabinet? Well, the uh, RK1 was showing that they actually have created a new spinner. It's a free floating ball bearing spinner using an optical encoder. And uh, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, the uh, the iGames, it's an optical encoder. It's not a, uh, a magnetic type of encoder. But to be quite honest, that might be enough for everyone. I mean, it's weighted, it's free spinning, and it's a definite improvement over their first gen clicky spinner. And again, I am excited for them. and I hope that they do well with it. Um, my spinner is designed for outside arcade one up as well. So I'm not, I'm not concerned about it at all, but I'm extremely <laughs> happy that I was able to help them during the interim. And now that they have those installed in the machines, which we all agree, that's probably what they should have had to begin with. I'm just again, glad that they did take the time to create something new. It's pretty decent. People seem to like it who purchased it and they're now going to incorporate that in their machines. So hopefully by the end of this year, they'll come out with a Pong and a Warlords. Yeah. You know, nice. Nice. <laughs> Matt, Matt, what was your takeaway? I mean, I know you've been you've been kind of you joined the show here today just to kind of we're going to talk about the three player at games uh, scenario that we did the other day. But I know you were excited a lot about some of the stuff that Arcade One Up brought to the to the map. What what was uh, what was on your table? Yeah, I'd probably say the uh, virtual pinball was a that was probably my favorite that came out just because seeing Toy Shark just came out with that. Toy Shark, sorry. Uh, they came out <laughs> with that and um, at, uh, Arcade One Up, you know, they heard what people wanted and they came out with their own and it looks pretty decent. And uh, I think they're, Arcade One Up is pulling from these different companies and taking different things. Like with the NBA Jam, you got the Wi Fi enabled, um, you know, capabilities playing online. At Games had that. You know, most of it's in beta right now, but still, they're taking these different things, different aspects of the the different companies out there, and trying to incorporate them into their product. And I think that's great. More competition that just means better products for the rest of us. No, I think that's a, that's a good, right. good that's point it. to bring up. That's exactly it. I mean, we I mean we've all talked about this before, and I've probably talked over the moon and back about it. Is that you know the more people in the industry, it's, it's a double edged sword. On the plus side is. Every other company is able to see what they're doing and come out with their own product and improve better price point, better quality, uh, better experiences. So one thing I do worry about is, I said this on, I think, the last podcast as well, or the, or the show, is I do have a little fear at the bottom of my gut about oversaturation because it, I grew up in the, in the 80s and we had the crash of 83. And I see a lot of great products coming out that I'm, you know, people already know me. I'm going to buy them all because I'm insane. No, yeah, no, no, people... no, 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 no. Stop right there. You're not just going to buy one. You're going to buy like three no, or don't. four and bag them all up and well, stick them on your shelf. Well, well, I have to be honest. You have to buy one to keep fresh in the box. You have to get one to take out of the box and display. And then you got to have one you buy to play. Then you have to buy one, one to, to put mod. a in. So, yes. Exactly. So I do, <laughs> buy, I do buy a couple. Um, Always true. a lion. But I do worry that. <laughs> They're like right now, I can say, you know, RK one up has, you know, their Street Fighter cabinet, which is, you know, the, the three quarter uh, Street Fighter cabinet. Then you have uh, New Wave Toys Replicate with Street Fighter cabinet. And now you got uh, Basic Fun, I'm sorry, uh, My Arcade coming out with a Street Fighter cabinet. So those things I, I do get a little worried about because each one's going to have the pluses and minuses, but you're always saturating the market with the same type of title. Um, so it's, I, I'm a little leery. Don't mark me down as saying it's going to happen, but I do have a concern of, too many of the IPs being the same between different manufacturers. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think the same thing goes true. You know, we, we, we get in these shows here, and I, I want to kind of put this out there. We get in these shows and everybody's like, you know, we're doing this all with a bunch of different content creators, right? You know, there's there's no secret. There's, there's uh, you know, Ralph and Console Kits are doing a show. We're doing a show. And the reason we're doing this is because we want you guys to have the most accurate information that's out there. And we like to talk about this stuff. Let's just be honest. I mean, this is this for me is an outlet. So when we see right, these are the only people who listen to us about this stuff. Yeah, you know, our wives, people. <laughs> our our wives. I mean, I'm sure Ralph and them. They'll tell you they send them to the they send me to the basement. She sends me down here. And she says, "Okay, go geek out with your friends." But in, in all reality, all these companies coming out with these great products. I mean, PW, you 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 kind of hit the nail on the head with your one video where you said it was it was the uh, stream or what was it the arcade wars. 
um, because <laughs> because honestly, these guys are they're going to be trying to bring the best features that they can out. And it's our job to stay as unbiased as we can to talk about the pros and the cons. And, and honestly, at this point, until we get our hands on the the arcade one up pinball machine and, and some of these other ones, we're just speculating at this point. But mm -hmm. somebody asked me in the chat and said, did I pre-order the Burger Time? I have not yet because Burger Time, I wanted it. And I've just kind of been seeing where I want it. But I also want the Star Wars. I want the new Star Wars with the with the seat. Uh that's, so, I got to say that that was beautiful. I mean, that's mm -hmm. real nice. And I could see already people modding that, you know, to have the total enclosure. But even without it, I mean, that's how I first played Star Wars myself. The first time I played it was a sit down cabinet. And that just looked great. So I, I take my hat off to them for that. It's I, a simple thing. But yes. It had so much to it. Any Star Wars mm -hmm. fan is going to want this in their in their arcade or in their their Star Wars. Even if you're not buying all these arcades, you just want one right that that you could just mm -hmm. display it looks like you're in the x-wing cockpit but um you know what it, it, when to talk about that too i know the nba jam has that yes but like even like star wars and, and the older machines if they were to re-release them with you know the wi-fi in there so they have leaderboards i mean that'd be a huge thing as well because you can get your high score and some guy in i don't know ohio or arizona or or in germany beat your score that makes you want to go back and you know and get your score back on there so that's a huge community thing. Again, it's only with the NBA Jam now, but I do hope maybe in the future as they re-release maybe all the titles, they'll have that ability and a leaderboard in there because it's back in the day, and these are the kind of machines that you did that, you wanted your name up on that list and you wanted people to see it. So to have something like that now worldwide, I think would be a, a huge fun thing for people to want to, you know, constantly go out and get these machines and play them. I'm just really shocked, Lynn. And I'm sure the rest of the guys here are shocked that you didn't say the mini cades were going to be like your favorite because they had the old CRT TVs and the old oh ColecoVision well, and I'm just saying. Well, I I am not going to lie. I do I did have my <laughs> you know my little uh, love fest with them. I mean they're beautiful. I mean they are. I I like like Pete upset when I saw the Coleco ones out there. You know I'm I'm happy for a couple reasons. One. When we, people have been modding them at this point, myself included, usually have to find one of those old ones, and they're they're not rare, but you know they're very expensive. As Pete said as well, they go for anywhere from sixty dollars to one hundred fifty dollars with a box for these. Mm -hmm. And you know they're they're you really shouldn't have to touch them. But if I get them broken, could I fix it? Maybe, but I could also make it something else. So with these new ones, it's also a new supply of of cases to be honest for making machines. Um, so again, I have to buy ones to keep, ones in the box, and ones to mod. But honestly, what really got my attention was the like the small Atari, ColecoVision, and Intellivision, and it caught a lot of people's eye, including mine, that that ColecoVision one was being shown with Donkey Kong. Now Donkey Kong was the packing game with ColecoVision, but when it was released in other avenues, uh, most notably recently would have been the uh, At Games ColecoVision unit. Uh, Donkey Kong was not on there due to licensing. So I don't know if that was simply shown because it was at the show and it had to be removed later on or if they actually got that license. But mm -hmm. if Arcade One if they actually got the license to have that Donkey Kong packing game with that ColecoVision, that is going to sell just for that alone. And I'm going to buy it and put it up on, on a pedestal as my most <laughs> pristine thing to have. Because, you know, that's a time when Nintendo, you know, they were in the arcades, didn't have any home consoles. This is, you know, 82. And, you know, Nintendo and ColecoVision were actually helping each other out back then. And to have Donkey Kong's home port, which was, to be quite honest, the best home port of its day by far, that'd be amazing. So I'm glad and you're... Yes, I'm very I'm, excited over it. I'm glad you're on the show because in 82, I was three years old, so I don't remember any of that. You I wasn't even born yet. Uh, yes, yes. So we, we're... Glenn's the old man <laughs> of the group so, so I'm basically Yoda. I'm Yoda here. So I remember okay. those Coleco-like games. I remember them when I was in uh, kindergarten or first grade. We had it at break time. We could play it. We had that. I think, P-Dub, you and I were talking about this. Um, they had that in Pac-Man. And I remember that's when I first had Frogger, and I was like, this is awesome. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know if, for me, if it's something that I would get to play. I might get it to stick on a shelf behind me here to kind of display in the studio. Um, nonetheless, it's pretty cool, especially the price points, right? Yep. And actually, so. I hope I hope there's almost like a uh, a cycle of games. So if you do put it up on your shelf on, it'll just cycle through the games after a few minutes just to see it. I think mm -hmm. that would be, again, 
a beautiful thing to have on a shelf if it could show some of the gameplay on the on the games installed on it. I I think you know my myself the Sega cabinet really stood out. I thought this I thought the Sega one. I mean I'm I'm big on Burger Time, and I'm probably going to catch a lot of hate for this, but I am not a fan of NBA Jam. I'm just not. In fact, I would probably pick up the Sega cabinet before I would do NBA Jam. Just being honest. Um, yep, and I'm with you too. And actually, there were some comments out there. Uh, people were saying that why they chose, you know, like Golden Axe stuff like that. Oh, but then they started watching the videos. But they started, <laughs> but they started watching video of the gameplay. Then they saw, you know, the static picture. When they saw the gameplay, they're like, "Whoa, you know what? I think I actually like that game." So hmm. it was even pulling people into who had no, you know, need or want for it before. But the most important thing about that Sega cabinet is that they now have a, a, a partnership with Sega. So hopefully down the road we'll start seeing much more from Sega with Arcade One Up. It'll be, it'll be interesting. Um, what what? Let's go down the line really quick before we get into the At Games CES announcement. Right now, what's the number one cabinet that everybody's going to purchase or get, whether it's pre-order or you know, Glenn? What's we'll start with you. What's what's the next cabinet of all the new ones that you're gonna that's going to be on your hit list? Well, I'm going to be honest, although the artwork, you know, and the, and the music's not uh, identical, um, Frogger probably. I mean, that's one of my fun games. I always liked yep. Frogger. And I want to tell everyone out there, because a lot of people make these comments about, you know, the music wasn't right, and the artwork wasn't right. Again, that's not up to Arcade 1-Up. If you look at the other new releases of Frogger, most notably you can go looking at, uh, like, Basic Fun. It's the artwork you get from the manufacturer. That's what they say. This is the license. This is what you're allowed to use. I don't know what the issue is with the artwork. But that is the artwork they're, they're putting out. And it doesn't look bad at all. It actually does look kind of nice. But remember, artwork can very easily be changed. The cabinet itself has got some good games on there. And that would be the number one uh, for me on the list. Dubs, what do you, what's, what's number one on your hit? I think I already know the answer to this, but go ahead. Well, no, I mean, I, I think I said it. I think I was live on the fan page on Facebook when I was walking around their booth. And I saw that um, uh, the Sega cabinet. And I said that that would be a day one really uh, purchase for me yeah because i thought jam would have been know, yeah yeah i mean no no i mean i've always been you know back in the day you know you had your nintendo and your sega like i was always one on the sega side like yes. uh so the sega cabinet uh is a day one for me um and then obviously i want to get all the little uh the mini stuff because i honestly don't have any of those any any mini anything mm. and now that i'm running out of room I think that's a good way to go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that... I, I have room for those, but not, you know, 20, 20, 20 other cabinets. Oh, wait, no, right. one more thing. Um, they had an Asteroids Deluxe, like, cabinet that's got, like, you know, light-up buttons and more games on it and the better spinner. Right, that's uh, the, uh, the six and one. Six and one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And out of all the arcade one, one-up one cabinets that have been released so far, that's the only one that I'd never purchase the asteroids cabinet so that might be the first asteroids cabinet i have so so yeah that's like top three okay all there right matt yeah. what what's your what's your hit list uh what's number I, one i'm with p dub number one i'm with p dub so i'd like the sega cab i think most people are going to want the nba jam uh it's a four-player cab you got the wi-fi built in i think that's going to appeal to a lot of people but sega is number one on my list um and then i mean Outside of the cabs, I really want their pinball. So yeah, it looks good. Yeah. So I want it. <laughs> well, I think that's a given. I think everybody yeah. here wants the pinball. I mean, it's, yeah. it's 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 a given. I mean, and and to, to be fair, we know that there's you know toy shock. We're gonna get to that. Um, but having the different tables, the different selections, we got choices now, fellas. We got choices. Right. This is good. Right. This is a good and thing. The, and the and the different price points. Different Once price again, points. I mean. Looking at the, uh, you know, when John and, and um, Retro Ralph was out there and Doug was out there and Peter was out there seeing these pinball machines, I mean, obviously we haven't actually got our hands on the arcade one up one yet, but I definitely trust, you know, uh, yep. Retro Ralph and, and, and Doug and Peter more or less. I, 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 I do trust <laughs> Peter. But the, the, the arcade one up camera that really does look nice, it's got a lot of features in it. And one of the key things about it was, and, and uh, it hasn't been really brought up too much. That when John says it's going to be easy to open up and lift the machine yes. and get to the inside. And that's a key thing because, again, Arcade One, I've, I've had a lot of talks with them in the past. 
and you know, some companies don't like you modding stuff. You know, Microsoft or Sony, they don't want you touching this. Nintendo sure as heck doesn't want you modding this stuff. But you know, RK One Up actually kind of welcomes that. You know, they they want people to make it their own. And whether with that pinball machine, it's just for repairs, or it's actually maybe they'll sell improvements, new new features mm. you can install yourself. I think that's a huge again possibility in future proofing the machine. Just aside from the fact that it's a gorgeous looking pinball machine. Well, I mean, what about even mm. just making repairs? I mean, let, let's face it, nothing's going to last forever. So even if it's two years and then you got to re- replace something inside there, well, a wire gets shorted or something. Yeah, like that. Yeah, something. Right. Having that ability is 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 ideal. I mean, it's it's easier than mm. taking screws out. I get that, but I mean, just that factor alone, kind of thinking about that. It helps the consumer. They don't mind paying a little extra for that. But then you also have the other right. side that maybe can't do that. They can't get the butt. They can't get that, mm-hmm. and they still want a decent table, and they've got the Toy Shock. So, mm-hmm. it, you know, it's... And it's, again, Toy Shock, Toy Shock's doing their thing, too. I mean, they came out with their first two machines, Test of the Waters, and obviously PW was out there, and they have the new machines out there where they improved the plunger, or, you know, the, the, uh, yeah, the plunger, right? That's what it's called. Yeah, the and they have a new screen, a 10 inch screen in the back. So, again, they're listening to the community just as well. Um, I don't know if the price is going to be stay the same. My guess is it may go up a little bit. It makes sense if it does. But again, they're taking feedback and rather than just ignoring it and just coming up with the same stuff, they're listening and improving. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Peter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I what I like to see from, you know, the outsider point of view is that, you know, let's let's look at this logically is that Toy Shock launches a product that's only what, six weeks old, and they immediately got feedback, whether it was uh, the gameplay, the appearance of the machine, the plunger mechanism, uh, the sound system. And, you know, usually I don't see very many companies within six weeks say, Okay, we let let's make it better for you. And they've made some improvements on the machines that you guys saw at CES, uh, with more improvements to come because they are listening to the community and listening to them quickly, uh, which I found you know very very impressive. You know, being there, uh, I can tell you I did like uh, the new plunger um, as well as uh, the black bezel. Although I think if they if they want to keep the bezel the same size it is, I think a mixture of black and silver would look the best, not just I one agree black. With you, yep. I agree with you, Yep. I agree with you totally. Um, however, they do have, you know, with the wide body cabinet, they do have room in there with the way the cabinet's designed where, I mean, obviously it's going to jump the price, but maybe you could get a bigger screen in there with a one inch bezel, maybe go from a 24 to a 27. And uh, that would look nice in that particular cabinet shape as well. Um, mm-hmm. But they've been, They've been taking a lot of feedback, and not only them, but also the guys at Farsight Studios uh, with the pinball arcade software that are in there. And they are looking at, you know, the flipper delay, um, any kind of uh, gameplay lag. And uh, they believe that, you know, we're going to have some solutions announced shortly. Um, And I don't think that the next generation uh, or the next batch will have those issues. Um, so we'll have to stay tuned for more and well, see what they tell us. Let me let me ask you guys something because we we were yeah. talking about room here in our own arcades. You know, I've got ten machines plus the Legends eleven plus the pinballs twelve. I'm running out of room, yeah. and mm-hmm. I, you know, a lot of people were asking. I saw, and are you going to come out arcade one up? Are you going to come out with a full size uh, toy shock? Are you going to come out with full size? Now, PW, you said just now, um, if they shrink the bezel, maybe they could put a twenty seven inch in there. You know, do we yeah, really need just, a 27 inch screen in there? I don't I, know. I mean, 24 it's, just seems it seems good for what it is. Well, I mean, if they can keep it the same size and fit a bigger screen in, then great, because that bezel's huge. Oh no, yeah, no, and, <laughs> and I'm probably way. I'm probably the only one on this panel that doesn't mind the bezel because of my kids. I really don't mind the bezel, but but well, the, I'm the, one. The bezel, I said with the kids, it's not a big deal. But when you look at the pin, like if you look at the arcade one up, everything seems proportional, and just yes, that bezel yes. on the toy shop just doesn't seem proportional. But I agree, you can put your, your beer there, you can put a drink there, which is great. Mm-hmm. But it's, if you want to show it off as a as a centerpiece of a, a game room, which most of us probably will do, it just doesn't seem proportional. That's what I'm going to do with the giant joysticks from arcade one up. <laughs> I know Ralph got a little friendly with one, as so I heard. 
at, at CES, but uh, I want to get one as a decoration or Glenn, you had mentioned about using it for like, cause I have a lot of people over a lot of times and do parties or whatnot. Um, it would be a good party type game to have a giant joystick that everybody can play and kind of immerse themselves in the game. So, you know, they got to look nice in, in the arcades too, right? The, the pinballs, right. the arcades. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting. And again, it was just a good idea. I mean, somebody yeah. just kept, I mean, Scott had to approve it. But so, so why, why do we have a really big joystick? You could kind of stand there and play it. And most companies be like, what are you, insane? But it's really not a bad idea, especially if you have, you know, we have these big screen TVs now. You put that down in, in the floor and your kids stand on that one little spot and, and play the game. It's just a nice thinking outside the box. And I take my hat off again to Arcade One Up for doing that. Yeah, I mean, like, it's one of those things where, you know, you have this, Arcade One Up put it out there. They got it all out there. Yeah, Toy Shock was first, but they didn't hit. They didn't hit the market right with it. They they marketed it as a toy. That's what they did. Let's let's just call a spade a spade, right? They marketed it as a toy. Us grown ups, we gravitated toward it. Meanwhile, <laughs> arcades in the back, uh, arcade One Ups in the background, going. We already know that these guys won pinball. They've been asking for it for since we we came out with this. So now they took everything and they heard it. And they put it out there. So now everybody else is going to play catch up to kind of get to that same level or at least try to get well, to the same level, right? I don't know if I agree with they, they marketed it wrong. They always marketed it for, for little kids. I mean, the video shows little kids and old geezers like me. It was, <laughs> it was never targeted for, you know, for adults. No, so, okay. Uh, so we, we misconstrued it, it. We misconstrued we the marketing did. on it. Okay. What, this, what, what they may have simply not had in, you know, in a thought process at the time was how much adults like us wanted it. So if anything, maybe they could have come out with one of their pinball machines for the kids and, a, and a, you know, an enhanced version, but they're kind of doing it now. But I, I disagree. I don't think it was mismarketed. I think we're simply going, we want pinball so bad that we're going to take that one and, and mod it like Retro Ralph already spent a, <laughs> spent a fortune, uh, you know, doing it up. But see, I don't want to do that. Again, listen. I don't want to do that on a four hundred dollar cabinet. I don't want to put a thousand dollars total into it or twelve hundred. I'd rather just save my money and right. go, go buy the arcade right, one I've, up. I've seen people, I've seen people buy you know eighty thousand dollar Teslas and they start I, buying it right away. I'm not it's, putting anybody down for, for everybody. It. I'm not putting anybody down yeah. for it. I I personally don't want to mess with it. Yeah, I just I, don't. I agree. Like, yeah, I agree. Sorry to interrupt you, Stephen, but but like uh, for instance. Um, like I got a YouTube video. I, I it's done. I just haven't even posted it yet. Like I took a look at the Toy Shock machine. It's a four hundred dollar digital pinball machine. Yeah, I could have dropped a few hundred dollars into it to make it this, you know, uh, kind of like something like what you saw Retro Ralph do or Detroit Love do. But I looked at it and I'm like, you know, with this, with this, um, with the way these pinball machines come, you really want to just get them out of the box and really just enjoy them as they come that they have the right features the right games the right gameplay and honestly i'm not looking at i know some folks really want, love building virtual pinball machines and stuff i mean that's not really me so like for instance my video is just showing people how you can add micro switches leaf switches how you can change the buttons out how you can change the bezel um, and things of that nature you know uh, aesthetic stuff i mean i in my personal opinion if i if i was to mod that toy shock pinball machine, I would just mod the aesthetic stuff, put better speakers in it and things like that. Um, but I don't think you need to drop, you know, $600 into that thing and, and have it play 2000 games. Um, but to each his own, right? I mean, well, it's your, it's your, it's your machine. I mean, Matt, what, so. what do you think? I mean, with, with toy shock right now, toy shock and arcade one up, they're going to feverishly. I mean, it's just, it's just common sense. They're going to feverishly try to, their next revision is going to compete heavily. I mean, it's it's a no-brainer. It's going to compete heavily with the arcade one-up. You know, nobody wants. I don't. I shouldn't say nobody wants to mod. I don't want to mod. I don't want to do that. I don't have the time to do that. Now, to P Dub's point about nobody wants to put two thousand games on a machine. I'm running out of room, so that that kind of is appealing. What what's your take, especially somebody that's over serving us over in Germany? You you don't have a lot of room. Yeah, um, I definitely prefer modding. I love to mod. Arcades are a little bit easier, though. Pinballs, virtual pinballs, thats it makes me a little nervous, and there's a little bit more stuff that goes into it. So I could put a PC in it and do all that stuff, but 
like Pete was saying, you know, if it's aesthetic stuff, sure, yeah, I'm okay with that. But when you start getting into the, like getting into the guts of it, um, maybe replacing the monitor, that might be one thing. But for the most part, I don't want to drop a bunch of money into it and then worry that I might mess it up. Yep. And then um, I think, especially with the technology we got today, and I know Arcade One Up came out with their virtual pinball and it's Wi-Fi enabled, but it's only for updates for now. But you know that could be opened up to add more tables to it. And if I can do that without having to mod that, I'd prefer to do that. Again, arcades, one thing, you can throw a pie in something great. And I know you can throw a PC in right. a virtual pinball, but it just makes me a little bit more nervous. And you know, especially with haptic response and all that good stuff, I don't want to get involved in that. No, I, I agree. It, yeah, that's that's the point I was trying to make. And, and Matt said it better than I did is, I have no problem taking an arcade one up machine, gutting it, spending maybe what two, 250 bucks and have it play 10, 20,000 games. Yeah. But when it comes to a pinball machine, it's not that easy. It's definitely more expensive, especially if you want to do it right and more time consuming. So honestly, these three quarter scale pinball machines, whether it's toy shock arcade one up, or if a new company uh, drops one on us, I'm probably just going to take them as they are. And maybe just mod the aesthetics is just the point I'm making. But that's just me personally. If someone out there wants to do that big of a project, it's your life. No, and I, and I think I think right now, with with these mini mini three quarter cabs pinballs, I mean it's it's fair to say that arcade one up is really being the trailblazers right now. I mean if we're gonna be fair across the board, I think Glenn you alluded to that earlier they're they're you know they're blazing it <laughs> i mean they lit ces up and i i can't imagine what e3 is going to be like it, it's it's going to be interesting but one of the things we do want to show guys um we want to switch gears a little bit here and we want to talk about the legends ultimate so a lot of you guys had asked you're like hey <laughs> at games what's your ces announcement well they were kind enough to give us the announcement a little bit earlier and we got the ability to play my game room. If you didn't see the video that I did with uh, going on to a virtual PC where you're able to have your own PC in the cloud, install whatever games that you want from Steam you purchase, and you can, you can install it on a virtual PC so you don't have to go out and buy a two dollars $3,000 PC. Go check that video out. But Glenn, myself, and Matt the other night, um, last night we sat down with my game room because one of the features is being able to play four up to four players four separate cabinets mm -hmm. from anywhere in the world and we want you guys to watch this and we're going to kind of talk over it as as this is going on here because um we want you guys to kind of see here like glenn, glenn's in in new york and i'm i'm here in eastern ohio and matt you're over in germany and we all we play three players on this and i mean we'll let you go matt and, and talk about your experience since you're all the way across the pond. I mean, be, be brutally honest. I mean, what, what was your take on this? Uh, I think overall it was a pretty decent experience. The, we hit some rough patches trying to get us, uh, you know, all in able to play configuring the joysticks and all that stuff. And I know we've talked offline about um, some of the improvements that we'd like to see, but, I think overall it was pretty decent. I mean, there was very little latency on my end from Germany and I do not have the best Wi-Fi, and I was not hardwired in. Like I know Glenn was and, um, but yeah, I didn't notice really hardly any lag. It, it played pretty well for me. Uh, Glenn, what was, what about you? Yeah. Uh, again, um, you have to be on, at least in my case, on, on a Cat5 connection. Uh, Wi-Fi, when we first started out, it was so bad. Uh, both Steven and I thought there was something wrong with the server because the, the latency and the gameplay was so bad. But since I had the slowest connection at that time with the Wi-Fi, it brought everyone else down. Once it went to the hard line, it was fine. And I, I thought that you know there was a very little latency, not to the point where, again, the game would be, you know, like playing uh, uh, like a Mario game where everything's very precise. This is more of a button mashing type of a game mm -hmm. and it was fine it was fun and it was amazing to me that i'm playing you in ohio which is one thing but he's all the way matt's all the way in germany and we had a good game going on well and and the thing with it was not only did we have a good game going on but we actually played it for i don't know we played it for a good half hour 45 minutes i mean the the recording was mm -hmm. darn near almost an hour that we did and um, 
it, it was it was surprising to me. I mean, for an alpha build. Now, that's the other thing we want to state. This is alpha. Right. Don't expect yep. this to come down the pipe in an update. You know, we, we were fortunate enough to get our hands on it a little early and play with it. But for an alpha build, uh, I, I think it I think it worked pretty well. I mean, it's only right as as Matt alluded like, like to. Matt, like Matt said, yeah, like I said a second ago, the, probably the only issue we had was just the initial setup. Yes. You got to keep one hand up, wiggle this two times, <laughs> go like that three times, and Damn. then go break, and Damn. if you do it just right, it works. <laughs> But if you didn't do it just like that, we did have some problems. Once it was working, once we got it working, it was solid. It played great. But they do have mm. to work on it. And, and they did say they, they saw it. You know, they watched the show, and they said they, they saw that, and they're working on it. But, again, it is an alpha. And once they get that part licked where it's not all these special moves, do it one second. You know, it's, it was almost like Dragon's Lair. You have mm. to do it exactly the right time. But once you got it, it was, it was fine. It, it played very mm. well. And and right now, um, I know the other announcement was they were going to be putting uh, together a list, Glenn. You know about that list where people can no be notified when a cabinet is available for pre-purchase. The shipping is going to kill you, though, man. It's like 160 yeah. bucks. Um, so I don't know if that's a solution. I would keep checking your local Sam's and go pick it up personally. Right. And that was that right. was one of the issues right. we did. I, I agree. I agree. I mean, it, it, it. I know when you want something really bad, it's hard to wait. <laughs> but to spend that kind of money on shipping when it will be available at you know the Walmart or Sam's Club eventually, um, I personally also would wait. I think that's a, a large chunk of change they could put towards some other items like some arcade one-up little mini cases. <laughs> yeah, that's true. One hundred sixty <laughs> bucks. Um, but that was that was their big CES announcement that they had, and there's going to be more coming. Um, I just thought it was funny that people were expecting them to bring out another cabinet or some kind of piece of hardware, you know, and we're all sitting there going, yeah, that's not going to happen. That would be like, okay, arcade one up or, 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 uh, toy shock saying, okay, CES here, we just gave you guys a bunch of new machines. And then next month you go, okay, where's some newer machines, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things like they just can't do that. It, you know, you just can't. Now I'm sure there's going to be some other announcements coming to E3 from a lot of these different companies, but you know, you got to figure everybody's just getting their hands on these machines, Glenn, literally a, a month ago, you know, mm -hmm. right. In some cases. Right. And can, it, can they did sell can fast. I... And I, I think it even maybe took them a little bit by surprise and how well it sold. Um, but again, we realized when At Games was bringing this machine out, uh, at the time, a lot of people weren't on the At Games bandwagon um, from just other items they weren't very happy with. So I'm sure they were a little cautious about it, but the machine is actually really solid and, and good. And mm -hmm. it took everyone by surprise. And it's just funny how, you know, people two or three months ago would have said, you know, this, this company stinks, it's the worst ever. And all of a sudden they switch gears. And we've heard this before. I mean, People said the same thing with Arcade One Up when it first came out. It's a toy. It's junk, blah, blah, blah. And now people are, I don't want to say kill themselves over it, but for some of these cabinets, man, people are freaking out to get them. So you got to realize companies eventually realize, hopefully Disney will realize it with Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, but I digress. Ho these companies listen to people in the community, and they realize where the people are going to spend the cash. And, you know, $300, $400, $500 for a lot of people is not an easy thing to separate, you know, out of their pockets. But if it's something really good, they'll get it. And they've mm -hmm. learned that. And that's why we get what we're getting now. Can I ask you guys a question about the, uh, because I haven't, I was at the show. I wasn't able to play with this, uh, with the, uh, the MGR stuff yet. I did catch maybe the first 10 minutes of your live stream. And we're, we're um, sorry. We're sorry for that. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that that's kind of my question is, is that thing like ready to go? I'll be in full disclosure. I haven't even mm -hmm. looked at it yet. Is it ready to go? How hard is it to connect? Um, well, what, what can you tell me and everyone else about to, that? To make this easy to sum it up between the three of us, as long as you don't have a Glenn trying to connect, I think you're, I think you're, <laughs> I think you're good because Glenn doesn't follow instructions. <laughs> I, I'm from the generation of who needs instructions? It should just work. It should just work. Glenn, you had it. It was fine. Don't, don't no, worry about yeah, it. No, we're picking on it. We're it just giving Glenn a hard 20 minutes minute. out of our life. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it was good because it brought up it brought up a, a bunch of different things that we could tell them to work on because it is, 
I mean, I all fairness, it is kind of clunky getting into it, and mm-hmm. that's why it's in in alpha. But it's exciting technology because I've, as we're seeing, like yeah. arcade one ups go in that direction. Everybody's going that direction for Wi-Fi. Ca- I mean, we used to only be able to do this on our consoles. Now we're doing it with arcade cabinets. I mean, that's yeah. unreal. That you know, we all have different cabinets. We can play each other. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's it, right because you know I'm gonna be honest. We, you know, we played Turtles yesterday. My my son's more into Minecraft and you know Fortnite, which I'm I'm fine with. I play with them too. But these older games, all my friends are don't live around me anyway, and uh, I don't have the newer consoles. My my newest console would be the 360, which I bought like just Halo for, and it's sitting over there on the wall. So to play these games with someone other than the computer AI or just myself, I had a blast yesterday. I mean, we were talking, mm-hmm. like I said, we had Skype going on, we were having a great time, and that is part of the arcade experience. You have to have people around mm-hmm. you, you know, enjoying it with you, and. Wi-Fi has gotten, you know, cheap. People have wireless in the house now, and the technology has gotten so inexpensive where these companies can throw it in. And I'm really happy that they are. Well, I do want to say this as as being the video guy, the tech guy here. I don't recommend anybody doing Wi-Fi if you can. If you if you can hardwire, do hardwire, because as Glenn found out yesterday, Wi-Fi if his son's on the internet, it's not that Wi-Fi is bad. It's just unpredictable when you've got other devices around. Hardwire is something that needs to be an option, and that's something that makes me a little bit nervous when I heard from from Arcade One Up, and I want to talk to John. He's going to be on next week. I want to talk to him about. Um, I heard from somebody else interviewing him that there's not going to be an Ethernet cable mm-hmm. in the NBA Jam cabinet, and I wonder if that's going to pose some problems with connections if if you have a a, a heavy duty network. It's not so much that the cabinet's going right. to cause the problem. <laughs> You got to think about it. We're in the age of smart devices. I've got smart lights, right. smart switches. I've got you know right. Google in every room that tells my house what to do. My network has hundreds right. of devices on it. How is that going to fare with something like that? That's all I'm saying. Right, and that was my my full disclosure. I mean, I have you know probably you know 20 cameras around the house. I got like 10 Alexas around the house. I got five Google uh, Homes around the house. I got Wemos in the house. I have power switches. So my Wi-Fi, in all fairness, you know, I probably, like I said, I probably have a good 100, 125 devices on my Wi-Fi, plus my son streaming, plus my mother streaming, plus my brother streaming, and me trying to do the stream and play the game. So full disclosure, it, for most people, they probably have just a couple of computers, and it'll probably be just fine. But always hardline is going to give you a better experience, but don't take don't take my house's craziness for everyone's experience. So, So to be fair... Let's also let's also talk about um, there was an announcement from Stern. Now I know Stern's kind of out of everybody's price point. I get it. They brought a Stranger Things cabinet um, mm-hmm. to the market, and I think it's I think it's interesting that Pinball's making this huge comeback. Right? Um, it's just it's just blowing things up. Now it is priced out of my price range, but. Again, I don't want to go into rumors and speculation, but what if Stern all of a sudden decided that, hey, we're going to make a three-quarter inch cab, and it's going to be a real pinball machine? Mm-hmm, even right. though, even though maybe they're working at, at, with other V pin companies and software and all this other stuff with 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 bringing that, but what if they did a three-quarter inch cab? Is that something that would would be of interest to people? And let's say it's fifteen hundred bucks. Let's say that. A three-quarter full-size pinball, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. Now, I have no inside information into this. This is just pure off, off the top of my head speculation. Is this of interest? Are you talking about like just a uh, full mechanical? Yes. Like real? Okay, so not a virtual. No, com- completely real pinball. If they, I mean, if they did it. Well, my my own opinion. Keep in mind, when we do these shows, guys, we're just telling you our opinions. It's not written in stone. Would be if it's three quarter scale, only plays one game. I probably wouldn't get it. I'll I'll be honest. I probably wouldn't get it. If I was yeah. gonna get a, if I wanted to get a real stern pinball machine, I would get a real stern full size pinball machine. Um, yeah. I think that's that that's just me. It, again. Just me. Okay. Before we before before, did, yeah. before we go anywhere, Scott did confirm that there is 
um, Ethernet and Wi-Fi on the NBA nice. Jam. So the interview that I saw, the person again, this is why this is why we like to do these shows because sometimes people miss mishear during an interview. It's loud in there. Um, and it wasn't any of our normal content creators. This is somebody else that just went that I happened to stumble on their videos. I don't even remember the guy's name. Um, but he had stated that there was it was Wi Fi only. And I was like, ooh. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> Cause I wanted yeah. to talk to Scott and be like, Ooh, you really need to think about putting ethernet in there. So that's good. Uh, Matt, you back to what you were saying. You were saying you, you don't think so. You'd rather buy a full site or was that PW? Well, no, I agree with PW. Uh, I mean, the three quarter size, I think there's going to be a nostalgia feel there. People are going to want, you know, physical mechanical pinball. And if they can get a three quarter size, sure. Great. But you're also going to have, it's going to be like you said, a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks. And then you're only going to have one game, like P Dev said. And the downside is it's mechanical moving parts. That means more likelihood for something to break. And then now you have, you, it's not like something you can mod. You're going to have to go take it to a specialist or somebody who knows how to fix pinball machines to fix that thing. And I mean, how many of those are out there? I mean, we pay arm and leg for plumbing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so if your pinball breaks. You may be paying the same amount of price you paid to buy it just to fix it. I guess I was thinking about the purists. I guess that was my. Well, yeah, I was. I heard what you're saying, and the purists would probably also not jump on board with a smaller pinball. They would want the full yeah. size mechanical. Okay. Uh, I do think they probably sell a few. I think they would sell a few, but honestly, mm -hmm. I don't think they would, they would sell enough mechanical three quarter scale pinball to really make it worth their while. To be honest, yeah. uh, with with a virtual pinball, you have a lot more options with it. And like the, like Matt was saying. There is Stern makes great stuff. I mean, I'm not, we can't mm -hmm. deny Stern's been around for a long time to build quality, but it's still mechanical. And mechanical usually has a higher break factor than uh, than electronics do. I mean, electronics break, but if you take one with the other, a bumper, uh, the, something can happen much easier on a on a physical mechanical. Not that mm -hmm. it would be beautiful. I could still I could see the, the ball going around I and mean, it would look great, but at that price point, I think purists really wouldn't be on board. They'd want the larger mm -hmm. one. And then everyone else will go virtual because, yeah. again, mechanical getting it fixed. One, like Matt mm -hmm. said, one break on that thing can almost, you know, break the bank just getting it fixed. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would put one in here. I was just, again, I was throwing it out there because Stern's just so well known. Mm -hmm. If that would be of interest to anybody out there, um, but you're right, the purists are going to spend the four, five, six thousand, ten thousand dollars for a, for a pinball mm -hmm. machine. But what we want to do is, and I'm actually going to do it, Glenn. This is actually going to happen. We are going to wrap the show up, but we're going to stay for a post show. I was show. watching the time. We're, I was watching to see what you were coming up with it. We're going to do a post show. What we want to do is we want to give you, the viewers that came out to watch us live, the opportunity to have a post show where we're just kind of like answering questions in the chat room and giving you the opportunity to call in. But for those watching, because of this going on Roku and Apple TV and all these other distribution platforms, People kind of go, man, three hours is a lot to swallow. So we want to be able to wrap this up. Um, until we get any hands-on with these pinballs from from um, Arcade 1-Up and some of the new cabinets, they look fantastic. And like Glenn said, we really trust the, the guys that were out there that were looking at them. So we know that they're going to be good. We don't want to speculate. We don't want to jump in the rumors as to what it could be, may not be, anything like that until we get our hands on it. Um, and I think that's fair. That's fair for the company. It's fair for us. So, uh, but I want, I do want to thank, uh, my partner in crime here, Mr. Glenn Planamento. You guys can follow him over at youtube.com slash Glenn's retro show and Glenn real quick about the, uh, Tron, the Tron joysticks. Yep. Uh, we, the Tron joysticks are uh, obviously out already. Uh, we have the upgrade kit for the Legends Ultimate going to Amazon now. So it might be a week or two before Amazon actually posts it. I also want to mention real quick, I just got a message from my partner that the Glenn's Retro Show Spinner is back in stock at Amazon. A lot of people have been looking for that. I want to say one other thing really quick for, I know we're trying to get the hour in, but one thing I want to say real quick. I personally want to send a thank you out to Arcade 1UP, uh, Toy Shock, uh, my arcade for treating all of us out there really great. I mean, uh, Ralph was out there, P. Dub was out there, Doug was out there, um, a few of my other friends were out there, and I really appreciate you guys giving us that kind of attention back. We really appreciate it, and we're here to show off your stuff 
and I appreciate you welcoming us into your companies to allow us to do so. Well, and, and while we're doing that, Glenn, we also want to give a shout out to Arcade One Up and Scott. Scott did invite us out. Scott was going to take care of our flights to yep. go out there, to be there. Um, being so close to coming off of the holiday and work, it just was tough for, for me and for Glenn. So we didn't get the chance to go out there, but we would have loved to go out there. And we really appreciate Scott for offering and extending that invite to go out there. So, I mean, these guys are they're really awesome people. So, I mean, they are like, like Glenn are. said, and Scott did, did offer Scott did offer yeah. me to come see him in the city. So I'm going to hold him to that one uh, <laughs> and visit him out there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, it, that was really kind of him uh, to do that. And uh, he said to do a rain check. So hopefully we'll meet up with him again, do a show with him then. But again, that was that's how Scott is. Um, everyone says, <laughs> anyone who talks to Scott, he's a good guy. And not only that, it, we have to thank Scott for uh, making John allow Douglas access to that pinball table. Because originally, no one was touching that pinball machine, period. Uh, but Scott said to him, John, no, I, if Doug goes out there, he plays. And we really appreciate that, Scott. Thank you so much. Well, so you want to thank the man who literally drove back from Vegas and said, hey, guys, I can join you today. <laughs> Mr. P-Dubs yeah. himself, guys. Check him out, youtube.com slash P-Dubs Arcade Loft for all the loft reports that you can handle. And uh, P-Dub, go ahead, po uh, talk about your podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, we just uh, we just started a podcast. I mean, a, a lot of us, we've been doing these live stream shows and people just love hearing about arcades. So um, a lot of us, you're going to see a lot of us coming out with podcasts. So, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure a lot of your favorite content creators are going to be doing them. I myself uh, just did one. It's called The Loft Report. Um, and of course, you'll find it on all of the listening plat platforms, Spotify, iTunes, all that kind of stuff. Um, I have a bunch of podcast episodes I need to post uh, from uh, all the uh, events and things I saw from CES. Plus, obviously, there'll be YouTube videos on my channel. So check them out. Awesome. Awesome. And Matt, we want to thank you as well for staying up late and uh, hanging with us here. And you still got to you still got a little ways because the people on the recording, well, this is the end. This is why you need to watch us uh, live. But, uh, Matt, we appreciate your service, that you're you're over there taking care of our troops. And uh, oh, yeah. appreciate you joining us and helping us test all this stuff. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. Absol absolutely. And, uh, guys, we really appreciate you guys tuning in and, and watching. And those of you in the chat, don't go anywhere. We're going to come back for a post show. But the rest of you guys, you got to show up live if you want to catch the post show and some of the good stuff that comes out of that. But uh, we'll see you next time here on the Retro Buzz. See you next time.